Shit, I ain't got my crew with me. So getting these hero shots gonna be a little harder than I think, because I gotta set the camera up, and then I gotta walk all the way off camera, and then I gotta come back on, but it's gonna be great when we do it. Let me show you how we do it. All right, let me get off. And then you just walk on, just like this. Just like God is filming you. Now, I can keep talking like this because I ain't gonna use this audio. Amanda knows she gotta cut this shit out because you can't see my mouth moving. So I can just, I can say fucking shit and I don't fucking matter what I say. Dee da do da dick, sucking on dicks because it doesn't fucking matter because this is all fucking B roll. But once I get around a tree, now's where the shot starts. Now we're, now we're cooking with fucking gas right here. You ready? Damn it. Fucking have to do that again. Almost tripped over that fucking log. Can you imagine I broke my neck? Oh, fuck! God damn it. Ah, there's prickers. Motherfucking. They were telling me before I came out here, make sure you get a lot of B-roll. Gotta get B-roll. Gotta get B-roll. It's all about production value. We gotta make a, we gotta make a real pretty show. Here's your fucking B-roll. Look at the foggy sky. Look at the silhouetted trees. It's so fucking cool and spooky. And you can put music over this. Motherfucking television show. B-roll, B-roll, B-roll. Look at them fucking roots. Da do do do. Here, here's your fucking B-roll. Why don't you B-roll this? Look at that. Look at that. It's like a gauntlet. I bet you I could survive that gauntlet. Maybe I'll try, hold on. Let me just park the camera here. I'll show you I can do this. Time survival ain't pretty. Well, this would make a real nice futon. That's what I call beds in the wild, futons. Because, you know, they ain't quite comfortable, but they get the job done. Oh, shit. God damn it. Camera fell. I hope, did you get that? I don't know who I'm talking to. It's just nice to talk. You know, makes you realize, makes you feel like you're not alone. God damn it. Hey Amanda, I want to taste you again. <laughs> if, I, if I break this on a rock, then it becomes a weapon. You tie it to a stick, make a glass spear out of it. Someone told me one time how you can make a some kind of a thing out of glass. That's the one thing you gotta remember. No matter how alone you feel, no matter how desolate the situation seems, somebody's always been there before you. And here I am, I'm about to fucking die out here. I got nothing to live on, nothing to eat, nothing to drink, and somebody's having a party. Where are they? Hey, I want to come to the party. I want to come to your party where you got green bottle liquids and cans of cold beer. Here I am with, stuck with the trash. I mean, I could probably make something out of these things. I feel like a goddamn homeless person picking it all up. Fucking homeless people. Here's something I hate. Almost as much as litterers, homeless people. I mean, what, what does that even fucking mean, homeless? You got a home. This is your home. Mother Earth's your home. Nature is your home. I just want to go home. <laughs> Don't use that, Amanda. Looky here. Looky what I found. First of all, it makes me real upset because it's just fucking garbage. People leaving them 
Leaving them in Mother Nature's fucking face. That's what's happening right now. They're just putting it on her face. Here, put it on your face, Mother Nature. I don't care about you. And what, what's crazy about it is here I am thinking I'm somewhere where nobody's ever been. Where no human being has set foot before. And someone already had a fucking keg party out here. Someone was probably sitting around, laughing around a fireplace, eating Funyuns and Frito-Lays, drinking beer. But if you get like over obsessed about the fact that you weren't invited to this party that these beers came from and you like yeah. and you start sitting down at different points in the woods and just reenacting the party or something <laughs> like it was probably something like this oh you were so good at the game tonight when you threw that fucking touchdown oh i know i was fucking a man i know i got my arm was kissed by the golden gods and i just yeah Look at that. Come on, Caleb. Let's do it. Yeehaw! Well, fucking A. Do, do, do. You know, I was never invited to those fucking parties either. I could have been a quarterback. You ever seen my throws? Hey. Go deep. Got it. <laughs> We're dumb rednecks. I play high school Texas football. That means I'm a god in these parts. I'm here, and guess what? I got beer. I'm here and I got beer. Woohoo! Hey, I'm gonna punt it to you. Hey, Amanda, you come over here. Sit next to the quarterback. Tell me about your life. Tell me about your dreams. I'll pretend I give a shit. I don't. I was waiting for you to suck my dick later on. Glug, 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 glug. Give me another one. Who am I? I'm your dad. Glug, 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 glug. Give me another one. Who am I? I'm your aunt. Hey, Tex, we need you to run down the corner store and get us another six pack while we finger each other. <laughs> Pull it together, Tex. Jesus Christ, don't use this shit. <laughs> I wanna go. I wanna go. Shit. Look at that. <laughs> Mother Nature Nurtures. Now this is what you call a nut of some sort. The shell's probably editable. This is what you call a squirrel biscuit. This is what you call a woodpecker peanut. This is what you call a squirrel pumpkin. Because it's tiny and it's got a little, see the little thing on it? It looks like a miniature gourd. So you can imagine all the squirrels sitting around for Thanksgiving dinner and this is like a centerpiece on their little table, their little moss table, and they're all being thankful that they're not lost in the fucking woods. But you know, you can do all sorts of things with these. You can use them as a weapon. You can use them to knock other nuts out of the tree. So one nut provides five nuts. You can use them as bait if you had a hook. You can put them on the thing, maybe catch a squirrel with it. Throw it out and put it on a string. You throw it out there and you wait for a, a squirrel to come up and whoop, I found a nut. And it puts it in its pouch, in its mouth, like so. Like when it's over here, all right? And then, boom, you jerk it in. Oh, <laughs> I think you can eat them too. Ah, it's real hard. Probably got to crack it on something. It's another thing you can use bottles for, hammers. Oh, hell, looky there, see that? Now what might look to you like a, a caterpillar or maybe like, a, like an alien's egg or such, is really what they call a baby pineapple. They call it the New England pineapple. They call that the wooded beaver tail. They call that the pleasure pickle. They call that the forest gherkin. They call this the Connecticut cornichon. And you can just eat them, pop them in your mouth. That's not, that's not the Connecticut Cornishone. I think that was just a, some kind of turd. She might've been a turd. Would you looky here? Look at this, bottle, can, bottle, can. Just seems like trash, but you can use trash. One man's trash is another man's, I don't know, fishing lure, bottle. Whole plethora of things you can do with a bottle. You can use it to store flowers in, to brighten your day. You can use it to, to drink tea out of, forest tea. I could teach you how to make forest tea later too. You basically just take whatever leaves you can find, barring that they're not poisonous, because there's a lot of poisonous leaves. So find non-poisonous leaves, and then find a puddle of standing water. 
and just drop the leaves in it. Leave it for three, four days in the hot sun. And when you come back, you just fill it up and you've got tea, forest tea. It's full of nutrients and antioxidants and all kinds of things. You can use it as an emergency enema. If you fill it with river water and you just stick it in your butt and then if you and then you tip your whole body upside down, the water will flow into your rectum and flush out whatever's in there that you don't want in there. Now you can, you know, you can sanitize the bottle, just light, like hold it over the fire, get it real hot, and it'll slip right in. I don't advise it, but I've done it three times. First time, see if I could do it. Second time, I knew there was something in there that had to come out. Third time, it's because I kind of liked it the first time. And that's another thing about, you know, being alone. Pleasure. Whenever you can, you need to masturbate. There's a moment right after you expunge your fluids onto the floor of the earth that you feel closer than you ever have to Mother Nature. Your seed is mingling with all the seeds of the forest. Presumably, you could grow a baby right out of the ground. I wish you could. I'd grow a baby right now and I'd teach it how to live out here. And then I'd eat it. You need to learn how to look at cute things like food. I showed you that on episode 314 when I ate a kitten. I know I got a lot of flack for it, but it's not like, it's just a problem with America. Is in America, we don't eat kittens because they're cute and fluffy. In China they do, why? Because they're hungry. I'd eat my own foot if I had to, to survive. I ate a penguin once. That was at a restaurant in Seattle. I wasn't gonna be the only one not eating penguin. He'd be like, oh, Tex Montana, he won't even eat a penguin. Fuck that, I'll eat a penguin's face. I'm getting dehydrated, talking so much. I don't even know. I should probably talk less and look for water more. That's one of the basic tenets of survival. Shut up and find water. That's, that's the name of my next book. Shut up and find water. Mama Nature is real wet in the morning time. And what you want to do is wake up before the sun dries her right up. And you could do the dew, the real Mountain Dew. Now, this is a little meticulous, but there you go. Just tap the branch, just a little tap. There we go. Might take me an hour, maybe two, get even a swaller but it's worth it, especially when it means life or death. Looky there, now that's the real Mountain Dew. Mother Nature's cup runneth over. Oh, survival. Mm. I know what you're thinking, you're thinking this pond is a great place to take a bath, maybe get a drink of water, but it is not. Trust me, if you could smell this right now, it is unbelievable. And I think I know what this pond is. I think if memory serves from my surveying of the area on a map before I came down here, there was a place called Horse Fart Pond. And I'm pretty sure it's because of all the methane that comes up from the turtle and the perch poop just kind of hangs low in the atmosphere and creates a kind of fart fog over the water. Woo! Woo! Nothing but perch and turtles living here and their meat is so poisoned from their own feces that you can't even eat it safely. I mean, I could probably boil it out, but Jesus Christ! If something don't smell right, it ain't gonna taste right. I mean, that is the first your nose is your first key to survival when it comes to eating or drinking something that you're kind of wishy-washy about. This pond smells like a baby's nutsack. Now, you know how like when they shit in their diaper and they sit in it for a while because no one quite knows they, they took a shit? They're like, did Andy poop? I smell something. And then you take the diaper off and all the shit's on their nuts. <laughs> I almost 
took a bath in Horse Park Pond.